Hi there. So till now we have seen uh, how we can develop a policy for SOC2. So next we'll see how we can communicate these policies uh, to the relevant stakeholders. So we'll see uh, two things. Uh, we are done with the policies, so we'll have a quick recap of what uh, policies are completed. And then we'll see how we can communicate these policies uh, to uh, relevant parties. Now, we are done with all these policies. So in total, we have done 24 policies. So you can see the list there. We have started with document control policy, uh, where we have given guidelines, how we can create uh, documents, what could be the base templates. Then we have seen physical security policy that deals with all physical aspects like uh, entering, how an employee can enter, uh, what are uh, the physical access measures like fingerprint access or uh, facial recognition access, uh, what could be done in case of fire and how are the HVAC uh, it, uh, controls. So all that we have seen in physical security policy. Then we have seen password policy, access management policy, uh, vulnerability and patch management policy. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, done with HR policy. So all these uh, acceptable usage, code of conduct, and all related are, done, are, are for HR department. And for risk management policy, we have seen how we can uh, do a risk, uh, a risk assessment on various systems, uh, what could be the policy, and how we can do uh, the next steps. For vendor management policy, we have seen how we can, uh, how to select a vendor, what could be the due diligence in the next steps. Uh, privacy policy and confidentiality policy, again, will fall under HR department. Then incident response uh, plans and procedures, uh, data classification policy, data retention policy, all these are under security team. Uh, then how we can dispose uh, media, whether it can be a tangi tangible media or intangible media. So we have seen in media disposal policy. Then we have seen a network security policy, how we can secure our network and networking devices. And data backup policy, how we can back up critical data. Uh, cryptographic or encryption policy, and endpoint security policy, asset management policy. So all uh, all of them, these are related to a security team. The change management policy, then uh, business continuity and disaster recovery policy. And at the last, uh, we summarize all these policies under information security policy. And that's why we create information security policy when we are done with uh, creating all these policies. Now. Coming to the next uh, slide, these are some of the templates, trackers, records, and register we have created. So first, we have created a central master list for all documents. So we can track all the documents in a central Excel sheet where we have a uh, document ID, the description of the document, who owns that document, uh, and other things. Uh, base templates and instruction document on how to use these base templates. Uh, we have seen what is a policy exception form, change request form. We have seen a risk register. Uh, so there is some um, uh, Excel template where you can clear with this risk register where we have all things uh, popping up from various uh, different sheets. And you can use that if you don't have any central tool uh, for uh, risk management. Uh, we have seen vendor list, uh, incident register, asset and access register. Uh, so we have a central list for blacklisted passwords or algorithms, or we have blacklisted ciphers. Then we have seen risk exception template. So we have seen all these policies, and then uh, we also have documented uh, uh, these trackers, records, and registers. Now we are done with policies creation, but we need to keep uh, something in mind. Like now, while creating all these policies, we need to ensure that these policies are easy to understand to everyone. Uh, whether it could be a technical person or a non-technical person, we should write these policies in a generic term so that it, it is easily understood to all audience. Now, all policies should align with company goals uh, and business requirements. And all policies uh, should align with the local regulatory laws. So we have seen as we are dealing with Malaysian-based entity, we should follow uh, Malaysian-based laws. Uh, then all policies are aligning with industry standards and best practices, like with PCI DSS, HIPAA, SOC 2, or ISO 27001. So all uh, policies what we are creating should uh, be aligned with industry best practices and standards. 
Now, we ensure all these policies what we have uh, developed are reviewed at least once a year. Or if there is any change uh, to organization or if, if there is any change to the system, then these policies should be reviewed. Now, we are done with developing policies. The next step is we want to communicate these policies uh, to relevant teams, uh, stakeholders, and get it reviewed and approved. Now, uh, each policy have a policy owner. Example, HR team uh, would have all the policies that falls under them, their team, like code of conduct policy, HR policy, uh, some other policies. So we need to share all the relevant policies with HR team. We may also provide a walkthrough on all these policies to relevant teams. And then uh, we give some time to this team. Okay, they can review and approve these policies. And once they're done with it, uh, we take it to the next level approval uh, for the management team. Now, management team can review and approve all these policies. And we may do this uh, level 1 and level 2 approval at the same time, simultaneously, or one by one. So, relevant teams uh, like HR team and management team, they have to sign uh, a, this document. We have under document control page. Uh, they can also share uh, uh, yeah, approval uh, attachment. Now, what uh, can be done is some team may directly approve over email. So they can share, uh, they can attach the email approval uh, under the document control page. Uh, now, once all policies are reviewed and approved by both the relevant teams and management, we share these approved policies to SOC2 vendor. Now, the next step is once we have all these policies reviewed and approved, we need to communicate these policies to all employees and stakeholders. Now, one way is just share an email that we have these policies created and you can go through them. But employee, they have their own challenges. They have their work scheduled. There are project deliverables. So they may not take it seriously. So what could be the best part? I've seen in companies what they do before employee joins any project or they uh, before uh, employee have uh, access to some critical resources the day give some time okay you have uh, to do this uh, training on these policies and you have to pass the assessment now once you have passed the assessment then uh, you have access to all the resources else it will be suspended uh, for 30 days so they give some time okay you have 30 days or 45 days so you have to complete this policy uh, policy course and once you are done with the assessment and you pass the assessment, then uh, you have access to all the resources. So this is one way of enforcing the policies. The other way, you can just give them, okay, these are the video lectures. Uh, this is the course. And you can, uh, you can uh, have your time and you can uh, start the assessments once you're done with uh, studying all the course and policies. Uh, and then you can get the certificate of the course. Now, uh, we have provided trainings to all uh, for, for all the employees and contractors. The next thing is we need to give a refresher training for all the employees and contractors. So it should be at least yearly once. Uh, we should uh, give refresher training on all these policies to all the employees. So that's it on the policy creation and how we can communicate policies to the relevant parties. So if you have any feedback here, do uh, comment down. Thank you.